It's an interesting situation, and it's a little bit more complicated than someone might think because, for example, in my state, we have ed code that was passed that forces educational institutions to obtain a signed DPA um, from any site or software. That's And the goal is good. It's meant to protect students. But what it does in reality is it hinders their access to real world applications whose owners just, you know, can't be bothered. I mean, perplexity is not going to drop what they're doing in order to give some little bitty school district permission, right? Or data protection, I should say. So it really makes it by default that what students are exposed to within K through 12 education is often a very canned system that is focused on efficiency and output. And so that skews what they're exposed to. They're more prone to see AI as an authority. They're going to work with this to get the answer. So I think one of the things that we really have to lean heavily on in order to get what you're discussing is we have to really be working with our educators. We have to help them understand how AI systems generate text and make decisions. I think they have to work with these systems to recognize the implications of AI as part of the learning experience. And we really have to work strategically to develop strategies for authentic assessment in these new environments, because this is a huge disruptor when you're working with an institution that's really based in knowledge work. What does that look like now that you have someone, something, and someone and something partnering together to develop knowledge and learning to collaborate with AI while maintaining that intentionality around productive struggle? What does that look like now? So I think we really have to partner with educators to tease all of that out because right now I feel like it's ready, fire, aim. Let's get a program right now in the schools that keeps AI in this safe, canned environment, and let's do that. But unfortunately, most of the training is on that tool as opposed to those more complicated concepts that I just outlined. And I think we need to flip that script and really zero in if we are going to focus on equity, making sure that our educators recognize what AI is all about. Yeah, and I, from my perspective in, in faculty meetings and, and things like that, that there are many professors who are terrified. One said, I quote, with AI, what, what do they need me for anymore? And, and so there's not only fear from the student side, there's also fear from the, the faculty side as well. They're seeing this and saying like, well, I've been giving the same lecture for 20 years and AI can do it better, faster, and, and things like that. And we've all heard the saying that that AI is not going to take your job. Uh, someone who knows how to use AI is going to take your job. And I really believe that. Um, I mean, just in the process of writing my third book, I spent probably on this one paragraph 10 times longer than I would have normally with with a human editor because I I think they would have got frustrated, but it just wasn't right. And I could keep on coming back at the AI and saying like and arguing with it and on, on this just this one paragraph. So that the idea that AI is always faster is not necessarily true. But AI for well, for some reason I can take I can take feedback from AI a lot better than I can take from a human. Uh, but also AI never gets impatient with you. And, and again, coming back, I know I keep on saying outcomes, but I believe, um, I'm my writing, I'm, I'm, I'm producing better outcomes because AI is there as a, as a springboard that never tires, never sleeps and never gets frustrated with me. And I would say that that experience that you just outlined is ex- is similar to what we need to teach students. We need They need to understand how these systems work and their limitations. And that critical evaluation that you're talking about for the content that it's giving you, that iteration, that back and forth. 
we need to highlight that experience. Again, it's not just about efficiency, right? You argue yeah. that you probably took longer because okay. you're you're demonstrating how you're leveraging AI as that thinking partner, right? It's not replacing thought. It's partnering with you to elevate thought. And that's really what I think we need to do with students because there won't be an aspect of their future that isn't touched by AI. I mean, that's like us expecting something to touch our world now that's not involving the internet or a website or an online space, right? It's it's going to be there. So how do we give them that same experience that you as an adult are having and not teach them to just look for output well michelle your your comment about it's it's the answer i mean i think what underlying what both of you are saying is this idea that a large language model by its very nature is probabilistic right and so underlying everything we have to do in this education of what's what is the engine powering all of this is helping people with this probabilistic thinking it's not the answer it is a answer. And this goes back to your writing process, Mark. You know, why is it that you're doing multiple iterations before you like it right? Well, because of the large language model, depending upon the inputs you're giving it, produces different outputs. And so you're tailoring the output based on new, um, based on new prompts. And it's this probabilistic thinking that is really at the heart of it. And I believe that this is a skill that we have really underinvested in, in, in teaching our students and, and our adults, but it is something that is very easy to make up for. And my analogy is if everybody who plays fantasy sports, which is about 50 million Americans right now can play fantasy sports, they can learn the probabilistic thinking in the classroom that will help them understand a technology like this. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that we think that, uh, that AI can scale infinitely. Uh, I think, in, I mean, in partnership with a teacher, a teacher maybe is giving a particular lecture uh, to uh, 25 students a year after year. And, but here the students, they are not learning the same way. Everybody learns differently. And AI can scale that a teacher's, uh, you know, whatever the teacher's capabilities are, it can scale it to all these 25 students and personalize the experience so that each for each one of them produces, uh, you know, I mean, basically they get the outcomes uh, that they would like to. I think that's where AI fills in. That's the gap, uh, which is basically we are saying about the two sigma problem. Each one gets a very individualized attention, and uh, the outcomes will be far more better. I think that that's that's a great point, and you know, we believe at University of the People that eventually. Uh, we will be able to create each for each student with AI the right path for them to study. Because as you said, some students study faster, some slower, some like discussion, some like to read, some like to watch videos, some like to be asked questions after every sentence to make sure that they get it. So, you know, that's, that's the power of AI. And AI can be amazing there, standing you know, on the side of the professor and helping the students to move much better on, on, their, on their education. 